Let me start this video by asking you a simple question. If I said to you, I want you to create a custom post type, meta fields, taxonomies, and use those inside WordPress, what tool would you use? I'll give you a couple of seconds. Let me know in the comment section down below what your main tool is. But chances are, it's either going to be Advanced Custom Fields, Metabox, Jet Engine, or Toolset. And all of those are great options, but there are more than just those out there. Today, we're going to be checking out one of the newer ones on the block, which is ACPT. Now, I've taken a brief look at this in the past, but today we're going to delve into a little bit more detail. We're going to see how we can get things set up using Bricks Builder, but you can use pretty much any other builder and also Gutenberg. More information on their website, link in the description. We're going to see how you can get started. Now, this isn't a deep dive into how you use this. This is a really simple starting point to show you how you can use these tools in combination. But if you'd like me to cover this in more detail, let me know in the comment section down below. Now, currently, ACPT offers both a standard annual license and also a lifetime license. Prices start at $29 at the time of recording this video, but obviously, check it out for yourself. And if you want to grab lifetime, well, you can do that starting at $99 for one site, right the way up to unlimited for $200. Pretty good, in my opinion. But what we're going to do is we're going to jump over with both of the tools installed, Bricks Builder and ACPT, and I'm going to show you how you get started. So the first thing you want to do once you're in your dashboard is go into the settings for Bricks, come over to the Builder section, scroll to the bottom, and set the options for how you work with dynamic data. Enable all of the options, render dynamic data and so on, and we'll select these as well. Hit Save Settings, and now we've basically configured things to work with the dynamic data. So let's take a quick look at what ACPT allows us to do. If we come over to the new entry, you can see we've got custom post types, taxonomy, user meta, options, and so on. Let's go into the custom post types to start with. And what this will show you is this will show you the standard native functions you have as part of WordPress, your pages, your posts. We want to come up and say register new post type. This is then going to take us into more familiar territory. So if you're coming over from something like Metabox or ACF, this is all going to feel very, very familiar. So the first thing you're going to need to do is go through the basic configuration. So we'll give this a post name. You set your labels for your singular and your plural. Choose an icon. We'll choose one of the dash icons. We'll grab this one. That looks pretty good. And then you can choose what is supported natively. Now, this is the same as you've seen with any of the other Metafield kinds of tools like ACF. This is literally the standard WordPress fields that you used to, your title, your editor, and so on. You can enable or disable any of these. I'm going to just disable the excerpt, but everything else is fine. Let's hit next step. This takes us over then to the labels. Now, again, when it comes to any of these kinds of tools, you can change the labels for pretty much everything. But most use cases, there's no real need to change any of those. So you can leave these as they are, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Next up, we've got the settings, which is where we want to make some changes. So you can see most of the options inside you are enabled, and most of these are exactly what we want. However, we also want to do a couple of other things. We'll set our menu position. We'll set that to one, so it goes at the top. Has archive is important. You need to make sure that is enabled if it's not already enabled. Other than that, you can basically say that's it. Hit save, and we've created a custom post type. If you want to make any changes to this, just simply come in and edit it. Now, you'll notice we've got some other options here. You can see we've got meta fields and we've got taxonomies. This will give us some information about the post count. And if we were working with the template builder that's part of ACPT, you could go in and open those up and start creating templates. So the first thing we need to do now is go and create a taxonomy because we want to group our properties together. Let's hit associate and you see nothing is currently created inside you. So what we need to do is create a taxonomy. We'll just choose the taxonomies option, register a new taxonomy, like we've seen before, we'll just give this a slug. So this is property types, singular label and plural label. Hit next step. Again, we can set any of the menu names and things like that. So let's change the menu name from here, and we'll just call this property types, but we'll get rid of the horrible underscore and lowercase and all that kind of thing. So there we go. We're happy with that. Hit next step. And this is, again, where we can set those settings up. So we want this to be hierarchical because it just looks nicer and it's quicker to work with. We can leave most of the other options assigned inside you. We'll choose the option for sort because this allows it to sort things, which is just nice and easy when we're in the editor. And we'll click on save. And again, if we want to come back in and make any changes, we can do just that. So now we've got our property types taxonomy created. All we need to do is associate this with our custom post type. So we choose the associate option. Choose properties, and we'll just flick the little switch. Now you can see we can, if we want to associate this with more than one custom post type, including the native functions as part of WordPress. Again, all pretty simple and straightforward. 
And before moving on, here's a quick message from today's video sponsor, Postinger. Kickstart your WordPress journey with Hostinger's high performance hosting solutions and 24 7 chat support. You can ensure your site shines bright with plans to suit every need. Plans include free SSL, free domain, a supercharged CDN, and automated backups. Plus, you can experiment safely with their WordPress staging tools, backup with a click, and let their WordPress AI help you out where needed. All starting at just $249 a month. Now discover more via the link in the description below with Hostinger. Find the perfect plan for you today. Now, the next thing we want to do is go back to our custom post types and we can create our meta fields. So again, like we've seen before, we'll click on create. We'll add a meta box and now we can basically create our meta box information. So we'll edit the title. We'll give it a title. And if we want to put in a name, we can do that as well. So now we go and create our fields that are associated with that field group. And as you can see, things are broken down into a very simple setup, your basic options, advanced and conditional logic. So the first thing we want to do is go to be the property price. So we just call that price. We'll choose our field type. And this is where you can see all the different kinds of fields that you have. You've got your standard numbers and things and so on, your text and everything. But you've also got some more advanced options like select multiple. You've got date ranges, phone numbers, addresses, colors, icons, currency, and so on. So for this example, we're going to say unit of measure and we're going to say currency. You can see we can set a default value and a brief description should we want to. We can hop over to the advanced and this is where we can set up more of the options inside here. So we'll just call this property price. Headline location, you can just say on the top. This is just basically where that field label is going to go. You set your field width, we'll set this to 50%. If you want to, you can have an icon, you can hide it. You can set your UOM default value for us. This is going to be GBP because we're working in pounds. And if you want to put text before, HTML is allowed, for example, and after, and minimum and maximum values, and step values, and so on, even if you want to put patterns in this, if you're working with things like phone numbers and so on that have a very specific pattern, you can create those patterns inside here. We're going to leave all those as they are. We're going to code the conditional logic, and as you can see, we can add conditions, we can copy settings, but we don't really need to use that, but it's there should you want it. Come back to our basic operations, and if you'll take a look at the top, you'll see it tells us what field type it is, the name of it, and we get a couple of different icons. The first one is we want to show this in the admin post list. We'll say yes, we do, and you want to make this a required field. In this example, we'll say yes, we do. So we've now created our first field. We can add another field in, and we can do exactly the same thing again. So we'll just call this location. Text is perfectly fine in this example. Advanced options, field label, property location. Set the field width to 50% and we'll set this to be on the top as well. Again, we don't need to set anything else inside here. We don't need conditional logic. And we'll say we want to put this into both field required and also in the admin list, post list. Just makes things easier. Let's add one more field in. And uh, this one we're just going to call gallery. And again, we'll just choose gallery from the list. So we'll search. There we go. There's our gallery. And now we can again come into advanced options should we want to. Set any values you want inside here. Any conditional logic. Set this to be shown in the admin or re required. We don't want to do any of those. We're going to leave it as it is. And we'll say save. We've now created three different meta boxes and associated that with our custom post type of properties. We've also created a custom taxonomy for our property types. So everything is now in place. And like I said, this is a really simple example. You also notice we can switch the different views here. So if you don't want to have one really long list, you can just change this over to tabular view, and that will give you all these little tables. You can just click on whichever one you want to switch over between the various different options. Now you'll notice when I click on location, because this is a taxonomy, we've got additional fields. So do we want to make this filterable? We'll say, yes, we do. And do you want to make this quick editable? We'll say again, yes, we do. Just means that the whole way of working is a little bit more streamlined. So again, we'll hit save just to make sure everything is committed. And now you can see there's our property in the top left. All our properties we can add and our property types. Let's deal with the taxonomy of property types first. Let's add a couple of property types inside here. So now we have three different property types. We can go to our list of properties. And you can see there's our property type, which is our taxonomy, our price, and our location. And our location is filterable. So let's add a property in. And you can see this looks as you would expect it to coming from anywhere we can create meta fields. A little bit of styling differences, but it all works in fundamentally the same way. So I'm not going to bore you now by going through and showing you how to add content, because I'm pretty sure you're more than comfortable doing that. So I'm going to add a couple of properties in and then show you how you can start adding this dynamic data into Bricks. 
So now we've got three different properties all created. So everything is in place now to start building the templates. So what we're going to do is we're going to come into bricks, come into our templates, and you can see I've already created a single property and a property archive. These are basically just template placeholders. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit this with bricks. So all I need to do now is set this up to be used as the template and tell it what content to use. This is why we set those switches in the settings of bricks right back at the beginning. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to our settings. We're going to come into our template settings under conditions. We're going to open up the conditions option, drop this down, and we're going to say this is going to be an archive. Then we're going to choose the archive type, which is going to be post type. And finally, we're going to set this to properties. So this is going to be only used on the properties archive. Then if we want to, we can populate our content and we can choose one from here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say we want archive posts. I'm going to choose properties from the list. Hit apply and preview. Now nothing is going to show up because currently we don't have any loop to show anything in here. Now we're going to keep this really, really simple. There's lots of ways in which you could approach this. But what we're going to do is we're just going to use the built-in function as part of Bricks itself. So we're going to come over to our elements and we're going to add in a new section. What we're going to do now is going to come back over to the elements and we're going to search for posts. And we're going to use the post option. So we're going to click to add this to our container and you can see this now pulls in the relevant images and the relevant content for our new properties. So that's pretty cool. Let's make a bit of space for this. Let's come into our styling and we'll come into our layout, add in some spacing just to give us a little bit of breathing space. And when we're at it, let's just put a bit of background color in there so we can see some separation. Okay, so we've created our basic starting point, but obviously this is only showing the featured image and a little excerpt and the title of the actual property itself. We want more than that. So let's select our post widget, come back over to our options on the left-hand side, come into fields, and in here you can see this is the list of fields we currently have. So we've got our post title, city view, Thames view, and so on. We've got our post excerpt where you can see our lorem ipsum text. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a new field inside here we're going to get rid of what it says inside the dynamic data area, and we're going to click on the little lightning bolt to select our own custom data. Scroll right the way to the bottom, and you see there's ACPT, and there's the three custom fields that we created. So the first thing you want to do is grab the price. So we'll choose the price from the list, and you can see that drops the price inside there for us. Now, obviously, we can customize this, so we can drop in a pound sign at the beginning if we want to, and you can format it. You can do all kinds of cool things here. Let's set this to be a div so we can style it in any way that we want and keep it separate from being a heading. And if you want to adjust the typography, you can do all that inside here. So let's say we'll set this to be something like 1.8 rem, in other words, 18 pixels. And we'll say that we want this to be a little bit heavier, just so it stands out, say something like 600. There we go. So we started to style things. Now we can do exactly the same thing if we want to and add even more fields inside here. But for this example, Let's say that's all we want to do. If you want to add more, just add more in. It's process exactly the same. So we'll save this, and we've now created our first template and pulled in some basic dynamic data using ACPT. Next up, we want to create the single archive template to be able to pull in all the data, price, location, gallery, and so on. Coming back to our templates, again, we're going to open up the single property template that I've created. No conditions or anything set on it, so I'll show you how to do that as well. So like we saw last time, come into the settings, Inside there, come to our template settings, into conditions, and set our condition for where this is going to be used. So this is going to be a post type. We'll select that from the list, choose the drop down, choose properties, and that's the basics of this setup. Next up, populate content. So we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to come down. This time we we'll choose single post page, choose the option to drop down, and all we need to do is search for one of our properties. So let's just we'll search for something like Edinburgh, which we know is one of our properties, and we'll choose that from the list. Hit apply and preview. Now, as always, we're not going to get anything inside you because we've got no dynamic data pulled in yet. So all we need to do is start pulling the dynamic data in. It's all very simple. Let's add a section in. Inside our container, you can see we come back over, and we've got all these single uh, sort of widgets over the left-hand side, these elements, post title, those kinds of things. These are all the various different components that make up a standard single post template. But let's start off, first of all, with the image. So we're going to grab the image, drop that element inside there, select it, just come over to the left-hand side, choose our dynamic data by clicking on the little lightning bolt, and we're going to scroll through until we find the option for our featured image. Give it a second, and there's our featured image being pulled in. Next up, let's hop back to the element section. We're going to click to add our post title in. 
you can see that pulls that information in. And again, we can style all these the way we want, global styling, you can set all these things up inside you. I'm doing this just for speed, just to demonstrate how easy it is to get everything up and running. Next up, we want to pull in the actual content itself. So we're going to just say we want to put in post content. You can see that drops it in. It's in the wrong place. So we'll just reposition that where we need it. Again, we're going to come back over, choose our elements. We can grab in any post meta if we want to. So we can click add some post meta in. If you want to add that, you can then come into your post meta and you can choose exactly what you do or don't want to show inside you. So this is where we can also reference that dynamic data. Let's get rid of what we have here first of all. Let's delete these ones and delete the first one as well. Let's add our own custom one in. So we're going to just remove the dynamic data that's pre-filled out, click our little lightning bolt, scroll to the bottom, and there's our price and location and gallery. Let's choose the price to start off with. Again, you can see this pulls the data in. The beauty of this is we can easily just simply come in here and we can add in any extra content that we want to add in. You want to duplicate this, you could duplicate it. Want to just start fresh, you can start fresh. So we can click, we can remove that data from there, click our lightning bolt, scroll to the bottom, get our location, and we'll just add in location at the beginning. There you go. Now you could obviously tie this into maps. You could do all manner of really cool things with this because this metadata is standard metadata as part of WordPress. Doesn't matter that we're using ACPT, we could be using ACF, Metabox, all the data is still being stored inside your database. And therefore, it's accessible to do basically anything like this that you want. Okay, so we've got the basic elements that we want inside you, including the price, the location. So the final one we want to add in is going to be the information about our image gallery. So let's come back over. Let's search your gallery, add our image gallery in, select it, and we're going to come over again to our dynamic data, scroll to the bottom, and choose the gallery. And there we go. That's pulled our gallery in for us. We can now choose the layout from grid, masonry, and metro. We leave it at grid. You can adjust the actual image aspect ratio. Again, we'll leave this as it is. Actually, let's set that to square because that looked pretty cool. You can set an image height, number of columns, spacing, and so on. So let's put something like two rem inside there for 20 pixels, and we can link this through to the light box. And if you want to add a caption in and all those kinds of good things, you can do all of that. And when we're at it, let's go and just add a little bit of space in this. So we'll say we want to put a bit of margin at the top and bottom. So we'll just link those and we'll say three rem, so 30 pixels above and below. And we now have basically what we wanted. Again, let's come into this and we'll just put in three rem there as well to give us a bit of space. And the same thing goes for our image. So we can say we'll grab our image and we'll put three rem below that. Just adding a little bit of space and breathing room around everything. So now we've created our own custom dynamic templates. Let's save this. Let's just jump over to the site itself and take a quick look. So coming to our property section, you can see there's our hero at the top, and there underneath are our three properties that we've added in. Now if we go and take a look, for example, Edinburgh Way, you see there's our property with all our custom details in, including our nice little light, gal light box gallery showing us all the different property details, images, and so on. Now this is really a simple, simple example, but it shows just how easy it is to combine ACPT alongside the Bricks Builder and get everything up and running in super quick time. This is a great way of being able to create those more custom designed websites. And if you're looking for a tool to do it and you want to check out ACPT, there's a link in the description down below. So let me know what your thoughts are on this. Do you use ACPT? Is this something that will make you take a look at it for yourself? I'd love to know and get your feedback on it. As always, all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. Until next time, take care. Thank you.